Hi there and welcome back to Viscan DFE. In this video, we're going to be looking at the distributive property of numbers as well as vertical column multiplication. So if you need some assistance with multiplication methodology, then you should continue watching. Now the word distribute tells me that you're going to hand out, you're going to give out each, you're going to give it out to each, okay? So let's look at a number example. Okay, so let's look at a number. Okay, so let's look at an example where I'm using numbers. So the sum is 12 multiplied by 143. The first thing I will do is I will expand each number and write it in the expanded notation. So 12 becomes 10 plus 2 and 143 becomes 100 plus 40 plus 3. And what I will do now is I will multiply each number in the first bracket with each number in the second bracket. Are you with me? No, really, are you with me? Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Just wait. Hold on. Hold on, okay? You know what? Let me explain it to you like this. No? Imagine we are in level one of lockdown and we are allowed to have a pochi. So we arrive at this pochi and the are way too many people. And you only have one pochi because you didn't prepare that there will be so many people. So somebody else says they're going to bring a pochi along and so we can make two pochis. But now the pochi has to be identical because else if I make two different pochis, then people want to taste both and that's not going to work. So we are going to make two identical pochis, which means that each pochi must have the same ingredients. So my two identical pochis will be in a bracket by themselves and my ingredients in the other bracket, all separated by a plus to indicate that they are separated. Right, so in my first pochi, I will have prawns and mussels and calamari. As well as in my second pochi, I'm also going to have prawns and mussels and calamari. And that's basically how it works. So when it comes to applying the distributive property of numbers, we will then multiply each number in the first bracket with each term or each number in the second bracket. Okay, so let's look at an example now where we are applying the distributive property of numbers with numbers. Now, if you look at my first bracket, you will notice there are two numbers. In other grades, you will call it terms, two terms. And in my second bracket, I have three numbers. So that is three different terms. So I will take my first number multiplied by 100, multiplied by 40, and multiplied by 3. My second number, I will also multiply by 100, multiply by 40, and multiply by 3. So then, I will have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 different answers. Now, to make it easier for yourself, you can even number your little bows like this, like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that you also know that you should have six answers at the bottom and what you do then is you add all your numbers together after you've multiplied it and you write down your final answer okay so we will now be looking at an example for the vertical column method of multiplication right so the very first thing that i want you to do is look at the amount of digits that you're multiplying. So the first number is 312, which is a three digit number, multiplied by three, which is a one digit number. Now, when I multiply these two numbers, it tells me how many answers I should have over here. So in other words, after I've multiplied, I should have three times one, which is three. I should have three answers over here that I will then add which will then give me my final answer. So let's make room for your three answers. So I will have one, two, three answers that I will add at the end. And that will give me my final answer. So I draw a line. First, I want to write down all my zeros. So if I have three times two, those are just units that I'm multiplying. So my first answer will not have zeros. 
then I will multiply 3 times 1. Now this 1 is actually a 10. And therefore I will have 1 0 over there. You can also look at it is that 2 creates the place for the 0. Then I will have 3 times 3. You see those two numbers over there? That means I will have two zeros. Also note, this is actually 3 times 300. Now, once I have my zeros placed, I can now start multiplication. So now I will have 3 times 2, which is 6. 3 times 1, which is just 3. And 3 times 3, which is 9. But it actually gives you that 900. Do you see how it's easier when you put down the zeros first? Right, so my next step is to add. Now, if you look at this, you will see that I wrote them neatly down in the place of the units, tens and hundred columns, so that when I add now, it's easier for me to see that. There we go, and that's your final answer. Okay, so in this example, I'm going to be looking at multiplication of a three-digit number by a two-digit number. So the first thing I will do is I will say my three digits and my two digits. Three digits times two digits means six. This tells me I should have six answers over here. Right, now my next step now is to write down my zeros. So I will first look at five multiplied by 321. Now, based on that first example, we know that if I have 5 multiplied by 1, I will have no zeros because I'm just multiplying units. Then, 5 times 2, that's a 20 over there. So, I will have 1 zero. Then, my third answer, 5 times 3, there's 2 digits there. So, I will have 2 zeros. Now I'll move on to multiplying my 1, which is actually a 10, multiplied by 321. Now I will start by saying 1 times 1, that is one number there, so I'll have a 1, 0. 1 times 2, you see these two numbers there, so I will have two zeros. And 1 times that 3, there's 1, 2, 3 numbers over there, I will then have three zeros. My next step now is to multiply my numbers. So let's start again with the units. So I will now have five times one which is five. Five times two which is ten. Five times three which is fifteen. But remember this is actually a five times three hundred and that is why it's one thousand five hundred. Right next I will have one times one that is 10. Remember, that's actually a 10 times 1. Okay? Then I have 10 times 20. 2 times 1 is just 2, which makes it that 200. You see how it's easier like this? Then 3 times 1 is just a 3. My final step now is to add the numbers in the columns as they appear over here. I will have 5 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 5. 0 plus 0 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 1 plus 5 is 6 plus 2 is 8. And 1 plus 3 is 4. Draw a line to indicate that your final answer. And there you go. That is the end of the sum. Okay, so in this example, I have my sum as 24 multiplied by 121. And if I want to apply the distributive property of numbers, the very first thing I have to do is to write each number in expanded notation. So my 24, I will write that as 20 plus 4. And 121, I will write as 100 plus 20 plus 1. Next, I will now draw my arrows to indicate which numbers I will multiply by which. Now, if you remember my explanation, you will remember that I will multiply each number in the first bracket with each number in the second bracket. So this is what my bows will look like. So now you can see I have one, two, three, four, five, six bows, and I will then have six answers over here. So I will start by multiplying 20 times 100. Now when I multiply numbers that have zeros, all I do is I close those zeros and I multiply the numbers in front. So I will have 2 times 1. 2 times 1 is 2. And then how many zeros did I close? 1, 2, 3. 
So I enlarge my 2 with 3 more zeros. Plus 20 times 20. Easy way to do it. Close the zeros. And 2 times 2 is 4. And how many zeros did I close? 1, 2. So I will enlarge my 4 now with 2 zeros. 20 times 1. 4 times 100. 400. Plus 4 times 20. That's a 80. 4 times 1 is 4. What I do after this now is I will add up all my numbers. Now you can use the association property by adding all the thousands together, all the hundreds together, and all the tens and all the units. So first I will have 2,400 plus 400 is 800. 20 plus 80 is 100 plus that 4. Now if I look at my numbers, you will notice there are two hundreds over here. There's an 800 and there's a 100. So I will add those two together. So my final answer will then be the 2000 plus the 900 plus the 4. Now you will notice you don't have anything in your tens because when you added the tens, it became a 100. But you must have a zero in the place of your tens for place value okay because if you don't have it there you are saying your answer is 294 which is not true okay so don't forget your zero in the place of the tens all right so this brings us to the end of this lesson with multiplication techniques i hope that you enjoyed it and that you found it super easy don't forget to choose one that you feel most comfortable with and once you're ready move on to the next I hope that you are able to apply this and find it super easy. Also, do not forget to share this video if you thought it was super cool. Okay, have a lovely day and happy studying. Keep on watching. And <laughs>